So we've been trying to get as much performance as we can out of my 3060. So today, we're gonna try something that you guys have suggested in the comments of previous videos. We're gonna try undervolting it. Stay tuned. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes with members across 150 different countries. With categories like film and video, music, web development, leadership, and even lifestyle, there's definitely something you can find to learn on Skillshare. I'm currently taking a course on Unreal Engine 5. I'm hoping to be able to use Unreal Engine to make some virtual sets and videos in the future. However, before I can do that, I actually have to learn how to use the program, and it's a huge program. So I'm definitely gonna have to put in some time in order to learn it. There's always something new to discover on Skillshare, with new classes launching every week. And because Skillshare is ad-free, you can focus your attention on what matters the most, and that's learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below, or just enter the code CYBERCPUTECH, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Now, on with the video. Why would I want to run less voltage to the GPU? It doesn't even make sense. In our constant battle to get more FPS out of our hardware, there's one often overlooked way we can do that. It's called undervolting. It's the process of running less core voltage to the GPU to increase its performance. Now, this seems a little counterproductive because typically to get a better overclock, you would want to use more voltage. Unfortunately, modern GPUs lock the maximum voltage to the core. Without doing a voltage mod or flashing a modified BIOS, you're stuck with a maximum core voltage that's set in the BIOS. However, you're not limited to how low you can set the core voltage. So, why would you want to lower the core voltage anyway? Well, that's a great question. It comes down to how GPU boost works. Getting the best performance possible out of your GPU doesn't always mean the highest possible clock speeds, but rather the most consistent clock speeds. GPU boost works by setting the maximum boost of the GPU based on a few factors. These factors are temperature and power limit. The GPU will boost until it hits its power limit, and it will maintain this boost as long as the temperature stays under a specific value curve. As the temperature rises, the GPU will lower its maximum boost speed. By undervolting, we're able to lower the GPU's temperature and in turn allow the GPU to maintain its maximum boost speed for longer. Let me explain it like this. If our stock boost clock is 1.9 gigahertz, but we can get a stable overclock at two gigahertz, but the GPU can only maintain that for a short period of time and then drop down to 1.8 gigahertz, we could actually get better overall performance if we could lower the temperature so the GPU could maintain 1.9 consistently. Even though we're not maintaining our highest possible boost clock, we are maintaining a higher boost clock for a longer period of time. At least, that's the idea. Now, the reason we're able to do this comes down to the silicone lottery. Manufacturers will set the default voltage curve based on the most reliable settings across all different variations within the silicone of a specifically bin GPU. For instance, the 3060 in my system has a maximum core voltage of 1,081 millivolts and a factory boost clock of 1935. I already know that my GPU will run a stable overclock at 2115. I can actually go higher, but it starts to get a little flaky in some games, so I typically keep it around 2115. However, when you're running at those speeds on the core, you're obviously going to create more heat. As the temperatures rise, the GPU will downclock to maintain temperatures. So my 2115 wouldn't be consistent without doing something about the temperature. The way I've solved this problem with my system is by simply water cooling the GPU. At the absolute highest overclock, my GPU never goes over 58C. In fact, typically it stays around 55C. Because of this, I'm able to maintain 2.1 gigahertz 
almost indefinitely. However, when this card was air-cooled, it regularly fell below 1.8. In fact, 1.7 wasn't even unusual. In foresight, this video probably should have been made prior to water cooling this GPU, but it is what it is. If you don't want to spend a ton of money water cooling your system, you can undervolt it for free and get similar results, at least with factory clock speeds. So, now that I've explained why you would want to do this, let's get on the computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so you're going to need a couple of programs in order to do this. The first one is going to be a benchmark called Heaven. Now, if you followed some of my other guides in the past, you probably already have this. It's a free program that you can download and it will put a load on your graphics card while we're playing with some of the settings. Then the next program we're going to need is MSI Afterburner. And MSI Afterburner is another free program that you can download. I'll go ahead and leave links to both of these in the description below. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do before you get started is you're going to want to go ahead and start heaven because we want to have a load on the GPU in order to do this. So go ahead and just hit the run button and it should start heaven up. Okay, now that heaven is going, the first thing that we want to take a look at is if you look right here, we want to take note of our GPU boost speed and the millivolts that are going to the core. Now, if you don't have millivolts right here, that's okay, it's really easy to enable. The way you do that is go ahead and click on this little gear cog right here, and from here, you'll see where it says unlock voltage monitoring. And now once you check that, you may have to restart MSI Afterburner, but go ahead and get that checked, hit apply and get it restarted, and then we can move on from there. But eventually, you're gonna be able to see your core voltage here, and your GPU boost. And as you can see, mine is 1935 with a voltage of 1,081 millivolts. Now that's gonna be our starting point. Now, once you have the starting point, you want to actually lower the core voltage by about 50 millivolts each time until heaven crashes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the curve editor and I'm gonna go a little rogue here. I'm gonna jump all the way down to a thousand millivolts. That's gonna be an 80 millivolt drop and I think this GPU is gonna be able to take it. So what we wanna do is we wanna line up the bottom is the millivoltage and the side right here is the boost clock. And as you can see right now we're at 1837. So we wanna go ahead and drag a thousand millivolts up to up to 1935. So to do that, you just go ahead and grab the dot and drag it with your mouse. And if you need to, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard in order to finally dial it in. And once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and hold the shift key while we're dragging our left click button to the right to highlight everything from this point forward. So I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna highlight all of this right here. And once it's highlighted, go ahead and hold the shift key down and hit enter twice, and that'll flatten out the line from the point that we just set. And at that point, we go ahead and hit the apply button, and it should, in theory, set it to where we want to. But if we look here, we can see it actually set it to 1942, which is not what we told it to set it to. So sometimes in MSI Afterburner, you have to do the same thing multiple times when you're playing with the curve editor. And unfortunately, I don't have a way around that. So we're gonna go ahead and set it back to 1935. Go ahead and hold shift, hit enter a couple times to flatten out the line, and then hit apply again. And then this time it appears as if it stayed. Okay, so we're at 1935 at 1000 millivolts. So we've been able to successfully drop our core voltage while leaving our boost clock exactly the same. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and drop the core voltage by 50 millivolts each time until heaven crashes. Let's do it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drop from 1,000 millivolts to 950. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the dot that corresponds with 950, and we're gonna drag this one up until we hit 1935, and use our arrow keys to fine tune it. And then we're gonna highlight all of this, hit shift and enter twice to flatten out our line. We're gonna hit apply, and of course, it didn't do what we wanted it to do. It set it to 1942. So we're gonna to have to go back, set it to 1935 again, hit shift enter twice to flatten the curve down, hit apply again, and this time it went the other direction. It went to 1912. So like I said, we just have to continue to repeat this process over and over again until MSI Afterburner decides to behave. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply, and it looks like we finally got it to 950 millivolts. Yeah, it is a little annoying, but 
in the end, you'll see what kind of benefit it has given us. So we're at 950 now. We're gonna go ahead and jump down to 900. We're gonna highlight this one here. We're gonna go ahead and drag this up to 1935. And then just like before, we're gonna hold the shift key and we're gonna highlight every dot from that point forward. We're gonna hit shift and hit enter twice. We're gonna hit apply and hey, we got it to apply the first time exactly how we wanted it. Now, as you can see, we're at 900 millivolts and we're at 1935 at a boost clock. Now you can already see we've lost considerable amount of temperature. At least, you know, we've lost an okay amount. We went from 5152 to 49, and that's pretty substantial actually. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it 50 more millivolts, which is gonna be 850. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click on 850. We're gonna drag 850 up to a boost clock of 1935, just like this. And then we're gonna highlight it by holding the shift key down and dragging our left key over. We're gonna hold shift, enter twice, and we're gonna apply it. And of course it didn't apply the way we wanted it to, so we're gonna go ahead and click on it again. And we're going to drag this up to 1935. And hit shift, enter twice to go ahead and flatten the curve. We're gonna hit apply again. And that time it held. So we're now at 19. Oh, and as you can see here, we looks like we crashed. So at 850 millivolts, it appeared to be stable for a second until it crashed. And when it crashed, it crashed my screen recording too. Luckily though, it seems like it's been saved. So we're gonna go ahead and start the screen recorder again, and we're gonna have to back it off from 850 millivolts because clearly that's not enough to be able to run the core at its high boost clock of 1935, or at least its stock boost clock of 1935. So let's get back to it and see if we can play with this a little bit. Obviously, 850 millivolts wasn't enough voltage. So the way we're gonna fix that is go ahead and go down here, hold the shift key and make sure you unhighlight everything that's highlighted. And then from that point, go ahead and hit the reset here. That's gonna reset it to the default curve. Now we know 850 did not work. So what we're gonna try is we're gonna go to 875. And when we click on 875, we're gonna drag this up until we get to our 1935 that we're targeting. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and fine tune it with the arrow keys. We're going to highlight this just like we've done before. Hold the shift key, hit the left key button and go ahead and drag over to the right to highlight it. Go ahead and hold shift and enter twice and that will give you your flat line and then we should be able to apply it and it good. It, luckily it stayed this time. So now we should be a little bit higher at 875 millivolts at the stock boost clock of 1935. And from this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit the run button to start heaven over again. And it's gonna take a second to start. And then once it starts, we'll be able to see if 875 was stable. And it looks like 875 is gonna be stable. It's running heaven and it isn't crashing. And hopefully my screen recording is not gonna be corrupted. But if it was, then you won't know because I'll have to record it again. So it is what it is. So. Is this worth doing? Well, as you can see, it's kind of temperamental. Once you have it set, it works really well. The problem is when you save the voltage curve as a preset and later go on to apply that preset, MSI Afterburner will either set it to a higher clock speed or a lower clock speed than you originally set. If it sets it to a lower clock speed, then you're gonna sacrifice performance. But if it sets it to a higher clock speed, then your likelihood of crashing from an unstable overclock at that voltage is extremely high. So if you wanna do this, I would save the preset only for reference and actually reapply the voltage curve manually each time. I honestly spent hours trying to figure out how to make MSI Afterburner set the curve from a preset consistently and I never came up with a solution. The best tip that I can give you is to take notes on your voltage and clock speed and then allow the system to come down to idle temperatures. Once it's at idle temperatures, go ahead and manually set your voltage and clock speed in the curve editor and save it as a preset. Then when you want to apply that preset, make sure you do it with the system at idle temperatures. 
but even then it messes up most of the time. But with that said, it really does help. If you look at this graph right here, this is with the card left completely stock, except the power limit was maxed out. The temperature ranged between 50 and 56 C. When the undervolt was applied, the temperatures were between 46 and 51 C. That's a drop of five Celsius at exactly the same core clock. Now, like I said before, my card is water cooled. So in both cases, the core clock was stable at those temperatures. The only time it became unstable was if I didn't max out the power limit. This is because as more heat is generated, the card uses more power. Without the undervolt, the card used a maximum of 177 watts. But with the undervolt applied, it only used 127 watts. This is a 50 watt drop in power usage. With the card at stock settings, I had to raise the power limit in order to keep a consistent core clock. But with the undervolt, I didn't have to touch the power limit. On an air-cooled card, you're gonna be running a lot hotter, and in turn, you're gonna be using more power. So by setting a higher power limit and undervolting the core voltage, you can get a lot more stable boost clocks. Some other benefits to undervolting, like I just mentioned, is your system simply uses less power. In my case, it's like turning off a 50 watt light bulb while I'm gaming. Also, by lowering the temperature and core voltage, you should extend the life of your GPU. In fact, the only downside that I can think of to doing this is dealing with MSI Afterburner. The process of applying the undervolt is just annoying, but it is what it is. If you wanna see an easier way to get more performance out of your card, then check out this video where I do a traditional overclock to the same card. At least with a traditional overclock, you can use a preset to apply it quickly when you just wanna to get to gaming. Have a great day.